Today's mix is a special request from a patron. I was asked, can I mix Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine? So today we're going to try to mix a Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Hue. Anytime you see hue, uh, like if you see a cad red hue or a cad yellow hue or anything like that, it is a different pigment or pigments that have been put together to mimic the original hue. So we're going to see, or the original, you know, the original pigment. So we're going to see if we can create a Sleeping Beauty Turquoise hue. Let's get a look at Sleeping Beauty Turquoise first of all. This is a beautiful granulating color. Um, I have dried some down in a half pan here. So we're going to re-wet that. See how well that re-wets. And probably made that swatch a little big, but that's okay. We're going to put that right on our paper here. So let's just re-wet. Re-wets nice and easily if you dry it in a half pan. And of course, I will have everything linked in the description below. And look at this color. I love how it just starts to take off in a wash. And this is a beautiful granulating color. I do have some other requests that I am going to be working on soon. If there is a convenience color or even a color like this that you are very interested in, um, and would like to see, you know, how, how can I mix that? Drop me a comment and we will see if we can't get that into a mix video in the future. So it's looking very green on my screen. This is not, it is very much a blue turquoise color. All right. So there's the original. I'm going to let that do its thing. It is going to granulate. It is just beautiful. Let's talk about this one because this took me a while. I spent a lot of time practicing and uh, not necessarily practicing, experimenting. That's a better word. I spent a lot of time experimenting with which pigments I was going to use to create this, uh, a hue that would resemble Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. Let's see. I mean, I spent a lot of time trying to find just the right combination for you. So let me share a few that I did and then I will show you what I settled with and we will mix this up. Okay. So when I started, there we go. When I started, I was looking at, this was my initial swatch of the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. I need to see if I can get that to become a little bluer. Just a second. I've tried to adjust it a little, but I just don't know. It could just be my monitor. Regardless, you're going to be able to see the original hue and hopefully mine will look the same. So this is Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. And as I created that swatch, uh, I was looking at this and seeing uh, in, in the granulation, I could see actually some some blue showing up on top. Something's putting out a hard edge here. You see that darker hard edge. And every time I swatched it, I got that darker hard edge. Here's another swatch of the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. And again, it formed that harder edge you know, in a really wet wash. So first I tried at PB28 and nope, nope. That's not the first one. I just lost it. The first one I tried is right here. So first I tried PB36 from Daniel Smith, uh, which was the Cerulean Blue Chromium and PB36 Cobalt Turquoise. So I had both of these, which are PB36, the Cerulean Blue, Blue Chromium and the Cobalt Turquoise. And I thought, that might be it. Um, but when I mix those two together, I got this and it's similar. It's just not quite the same. And then I kept, I, I was stuck with on the cerulean blue chromium for a while as this is one of the colors that could make this work. 
but everything kept showing up really too blue. So then I thought, well, what if I mix, I need it to be a little bit more green, but I still held on to that cerulean blue chromium PB36 and I tried to mix it with PG18 Viridian. That did not work. It went much too green. So here was my Viridian and those two together, it was just much too green. I thought maybe that the Viridian would give me kind of what was pushing out like that dark edge and would resemble it more. It did not work. So we scratched that. Then I started looking at PG50 and thought, well, what about PG50? And then the PB36 cobalt turquoise and a touch of PB36 cerulean blue chromium. Again, I just couldn't give up that blue. That was not it. It was close. And I got some beautiful granulating, separating mixes there. So there is a look for you at some of those. We're going to look, talk about that. Uh, I was also seeing in my, on my palette, I started to see this separation happening in the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. Let me share with you what the palette looked like. So there were, there were many mixes. These are all different mixes that I had tried, but this is genuine. And if you look at the separation, it started to get this actually like this darker, murky, milky looking color that was separating as everything else was drying. And if I think of turquoise, you know, turquoise, the stone has like veins in it. So that didn't surprise me that I was seeing something like this showing up. And that's probably what's pushing that dark line to the edge of my swatches. But how could I mimic that? Because when I looked at my mix, or excuse me, when I looked at the actual swatch, it definitely has this softness about it. There's this luminosity and yet this softness at the same time. And I, you know, and I don't know if I'm, I'm describing what I was seeing well, but that's when I decided, what if I bring in a white? Now, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise is supposed to be like a transparent, um, semi-transparent color. So I thought that PW6 Titanium White was going to be too um, opaque of a color. And I had tried PW4. And in some of these mixes here, I did the PG50, which was the cobalt teal blue right here with the PB36 cobalt turquoise and the PB36 cerulean blue chromium. Again, I'm not giving that blue up. And I added in the PW4 Chinese white by Daniel Smith. I was starting to see some of that softness that I was looking for at that point, but the colors still, they just weren't right. Here's the original. And then here's the mix again, beautiful granulating colors. Gorgeous. Um, leave, showing these so that you guys can see if there's a mix that you see on here that you're like, Oh, that's beautiful. You can just mark down uh, what was in it and try to make that for yourself. I love the separation and the granulation that you get in these, but we're trying to make a sleeping beauty turquoise hue that will look the same. And these still just were not it. In my opinion, they're close. They're very close. And if close is good enough for you and you have these pigments, um, definitely give it a try. But P the PB36, again, I was using two different hues of PB36, cerulean blue chromium and cobalt turquoise. This is the same pigment, just treated differently. So the hues become very different. Okay. So moving on, <clears throat> I looked at, instead of just PW6, because the PW4, the Chinese white, it still just wasn't quite there. It was transparent and I wasn't getting that cloudy softness that I can see once my Sleeping Beauty Turquoise dries. 
So I kind of went away from the Chinese wife and I started leaning to, these were more of the, um, with the Chinese white though here. Then I said, well, wait a minute. What about PB 36 cerulean blue chromium and Schmincke's um, cobalt green. Is it cobalt green deep? Anyways, it was PG 26 and those definitely gorgeous color. That is a beautiful color, but that was not it. That was just not even close. Um, so we went away from PG 26 altogether and I just kept going like little bits, little bits. I'm almost here, but I needed a little bit more this way, or I'm almost there, but I need a little bit more of that. So then we went to the PB 36. There's uh PB 36 PW four. So cerulean blue chromium cobalt turquoise Chinese white. I added more of the cobalt turquoise because this was almost there, but it still just wasn't quite right. And I added a little bit more of the, um, cobalt turquoise again, so close, but still just not quite there. Then I looked at, I started thinking what other, what other pigments do I have that are in this range that look similar to this? And I remembered my mission gold palette. So my mission gold pure pigment set, this one, these two colors right here. And those are these cobalt turquoise hue PB 28. See again, cobalt turquoise hue. It's meant to look like cobalt turquoise, but we're using PB 28 and cobalt green deep. PB 36. So PB 28 and PB 36. I thought, I wonder how those will mix together. Now I was already using cobalt turquoise here. They call it cobalt green deep PB 36 and Daniel Smith calls it cobalt turquoise PB 36. These two colors, while they are very similar, the hues are slightly different. You can see them here. So these look slightly different. Which one was going to work? I tried the Daniel Smith version and that was right here. And I went back to the PW six. So I went back to, to titanium white and I was starting to get a bit closer. You see now, now we're in that, that range, that range is so close. So this one, is all mission gold. So we had the PW six, the, the, they call it Chinese white on theirs in the mission gold. Their PW six says Chinese white. That is the one I was using here and here. And this was with the Daniel Smith cobalt turquoise. This was with the mission gold cobalt turquoise. Those were so very similar, but there was just a little something else that I felt was missing. I wasn't getting that softness that I was seeing in the original. So then I thought, what if it's not the Chinese white that I need or this PW, the PW six that I have here in my palette from mission gold. What if you see, <laughs> I've mixed quite a few on here too, trying to get there. Sorry if I spun that and made anybody dizzy, but what if these two could mix with something else that would create a softness and bring a slight bit more warmth? That's what I felt was missing. So I mixed right here. This was PW six colon one which is Daniel Smith's buff titanium. So PW six colon one, this one, ignore that was from an old, this was an old scrap piece of paper. I was running out of paper, cobalt turquoise. And instead of the PG 50, 
the PB28 was giving me a little bit more of the blue I needed because I knew it needed blue. It just need, didn't need this much blue, like the cobalt blue chrome, or excuse me, cerulean blue chromium. I'm sorry if I'm confusing anybody out there. So the, the PG50 was a little bit more green leaning. The cobalt turquoise is definitely green leaning, but I still needed something a little bit more blue. I needed a little more green, or I still needed it to have green. And I needed something that would add this softness and just a subtle hint of warmth to it. And that's when I came up with the cobalt turquoise, or in the case of Mission Gold, it's cobalt green deep. I mixed them both ways. I mixed them with the Dinga Smith version, and I mixed it with the Mission Gold version of the Cobalt, the PB36, Cobalt Turquoise or Cobalt Green Deep. I think that you can absolutely use the Daniel Smith Cobalt Turquoise Buff Titanium, but I don't have PB28, this one, which is Cobalt Turquoise Q in Daniel Smith. So I'm using Mission Gold. I'm just going to grab one of my little tiny dishes here to mix in. Oh, there we can rest the brush right there. And you can see the palette. All right. So I'm going to give these just a little wake up. And you saw how easily this one reactivated. It reactivates so well. So I've labeled these out for you. These are not necessarily in the order of which pigment uh, is in the mix the most, but which pigment you should start with to be able to mix this if you don't have the original and you're wanting to come close to this. So I'm going to leave this right here so we can kind of see what that looks like. When we start, we're going to take our PW6 colon one, our buff titanium, and we want to take that we're going to start with that in our, on our palette. Okay. So there is some PW6 colon one. There's not a whole lot in there. And then to that, we're going to add our cobalt turquoise PB28. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that we add it in here enough so that when it's mixed with the buff titanium, it barely changes the hue that we pulled from here. Okay. So this hue is still looking very similar. It's showing up a little green on my screen, but it's very similar to the cobalt turquoise. Okay. Now to that, we have to get back to this or we have to get to that. Not back to, we never started with it. So now I'm going to add my cobalt green deep. So I grab a little bit and I'm going to start, let me put it over here. I'm going to start mixing some of this in. Okay. This is still much bluer. I need to, you see where the cobalt green deep is over here. I'm coming almost to that because if we look at those, the sleeping beauty turquoise and the uh, cobalt green deep, they're not far off from each other. And I did try mixing just the cobalt green deep with the buff titanium. It doesn't work. Doesn't have enough of the blue um, in it that we need. The PB28 was definitely necessary. So if I look at that, I'm still not quite there. And it's hard because this one has a gloss on it and this doesn't, but you can see there, I'm still not quite there. I'm going to grab a little bit more, bring a little bit more in. Okay. So now I'm a lot closer, a lot closer to this. See, it's just a softer version of that. Those, those are pretty close. They're pretty close. Let's go ahead and give it a try. 
I did not. When I put the colors in here, I forgot to swatch them out for you. So we had our BW6, right, our buff titanium. And this will granulate. Then our cobalt turquoise. This is a granulator. And then our cobalt green deep also our pb36 also a lovely granulator so when we put all three of these together that was the other thing i knew i wanted granulating colors because the sleeping beauty turquoise is a very it's very much granulating so to get that hue that was going to look just like it let's look at our mix without using the actual color because if you haven't priced this one this is definitely one of Daniel Smith's most expensive, one of their most expensive pigments. So if you, if it's not in the budget and you love the color, but don't want to afford or can't afford to buy it as a single pigment and watch this, it takes off. It takes off much like the original does. I might not have enough of the blue in that. I'm going to just bring a touch more in here before I finish swatching this. Just a tiny bit. There we go. I'm trying to get the swatch to look about as even as this one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let that settle in and do its thing. And we are going to take a closer look, but I think we've got it. So let me know in the comments, is this one that you're going to give a try? It's beautiful. The color, the original color is gorgeous. Look at how that granulates. And I'm just working on the Bee Inspired Cellulose Paper. It's what I usually do some swatching on. I find it very affordable and I can play around with some mixes. The cold press texture is lovely. It is not one of those cheaper cold press papers where it has a bunch of like the straight lines in it. I don't like those kind. Um, this has a cold press texture that very much mimics a lot of my more expensive cotton papers. And that's what makes it one of my favorites. It is linked in the description, but you can already see as this is starting to absorb into the paper and dry, these look almost identical. So is this another success? Our Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Hue. That's what we're going to call this one. And are you going to give it a try? I certainly hope so. Uh, Mission Gold were, is the maker of the two hues that I chose, these two pigments. Um, and of course I used the Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith's buff titanium, but if you have buff titanium in another brand, they, those are all pretty similar. You could probably get away with that. Um, if you have PB 28 and PB 36 in a different mix or in a different, excuse me, by a different manufacturer, and you want to give those a try, I definitely encourage you to do so. Will they come out as close as this? It just depends on how closely the hue of that color and pigment from the your favorite manufacturer matches up to the ones from Mission Gold and Daniel Smith. If they look the same when you look at their swatches, then absolutely uh, they should work and come out and give you the same results. I hope you're going to give this one a try. Let me know in the comments. I mean, this is pretty much, it's not dry. But I, I think just from there, we can see even before it's fully dry, those look almost identical. So for me, I'm calling that one a success. I will certainly use this mix in the future. I love that. Will I buy um, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine again? Um, you know, for me, now that I can mix this hue, this is a convenience, but it's a luxury convenience because it does come with a little bit higher uh, sticker 
and I could conceivably mix these up and, and create a half pan of the hue. I mean, I certainly, I certainly could do that. A huge thank you to Heather for asking if I could give this one a try. I hope that, um, you're happy with the results and let me know. Drop me a comment if you're going to try it out. I hope that saves you hope that saves you a little bit of money and that you can create a mix that's just absolutely beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful granulating uh, blue green colors that I have seen. But look at look at the cobalt green deep from Mission Gold. Look how that one granulates. Those paints are beautiful and I'm going to post a link to them in the description. But I just want to say those go on sale and I would watch for a sale. If you want the Mission Gold Pure Pigment Set, I would absolutely watch for a sale because they are beautiful paints, but they definitely go, I want to say that I got mine. I think I got mine around just under $60 and they fluctuate. When I, last time I checked, they were about $24 more than I paid for, than I paid for them. Uh, keep your eye on them because they're definitely worth, they're definitely worth having. I am very happy that I have those and I'm looking forward to painting with them more, but uh, just to help, help uh, your, your pocket and your art supply budget go further. Those are definitely ones to watch for them to drop. If you are a channel member, once this has fully dried, I will get a good picture of this and I will post it for you in the guess the mix thread over on our discord server. If you are a channel member and you're not yet connected to discord, I definitely recommend it. There's so much behind the scenes and we play guess the mix every Sunday where you try to guess which pigments are in the mix before the video comes out. So I hope you guys were successful in guessing this one and yeah, come on back again next week for another mix. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you are, do give the video a thumbs up. It helps and consider hitting that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when our next mix comes out. I hope you're going to give this one a try. I'm going to pop this another video up right here that you might like to watch next. Until next time, my friends, keep mixing, keep creating, and I'll see you in a video real soon. Bye guys.